Hello and welcome to HeiserCast episode 11. I'm Dave here with Joanna and Lou and we have another exciting episode for you and it's sponsored by Reaper Disc Supply. You can see Joanna has one of her uh, shirts that we got from Reaper Discs. If you want to check them out, it's reaperdiscs.com. You just got Heiser and you can get a free gift with any purchase. Um, but for this episode, we're going to talk about a couple interesting topics that revolve around discs. I'm going to start off real quick, a little short topic to start with. If you could play a round, could only play the rest of the rounds of your life with only one disc, what disc would it be? I would, would you like to start? Uh, mm. I, would, I would probably have to go with The Compass by Latitude 64. And, and why? Let's oh, so it has... Great stability. For me, stability, or great stability means that it's uh, it's going to hold the line you put it on. It has great glide as well. And I, for a mid-range, it's still pretty fast. So very versatile off of a T-pad. It would be versatile for any shot, backhand, forehand, overhand, or roller. And uh, I think it would be comfortable enough to putt with it, too. So I might lose some distance. Um, from someone who would choose like a driver to go out with, but it will make the other parts of my game really good uh, if I went with that compass from Latitude 64. That makes a lot of sense. I yeah. think you could definitely have a lot of versatile different shots. You could still get enough distance to do well enough on certain courses. Yeah. But then obviously it's a straight enough if for your stability, and it's a mid-range, so you could probably putt with it. Yeah, for what, sure. What about you? I'm really stuck. Oh, no. I have three options, and I know that's not helpful. Just one. We can help well, you pick. Yeah, talk us through. Okay. And we'll, we'll figure it out together. Okay, are we you ready? You can help us, too. Once she describes them, comment which one she should use. How's okay. That? I'll probably figure it out once I talk through it. Okay. Perfect. That works. So, my first, my gut reaction was my G-Star Leopard 3. Mm. I love that disc. I think I get great distance. The Heiser flip it up. Great turnover shots. Or if you put on Heiser, it'll... It'll go, I mean, I can be touchy with it, and I like that. And I like that I can also rip on it. And I think that could be very useful in a round, obviously, because that's all the shots you need. Mm -hmm. um, my other thought, well, was the Buzz. Buzz SS. Okay. So it's like a flippier option, like in not just a regular Buzz. Um, just because it is a mid-range, and I think that you can maybe manipulate it a little bit more. My thought was maybe it's too flippy, mm -hmm. potentially. And my third thought is um, the reactor from MVP Disc, but it's the Marie Curie stamped, like limited run glow reactor. Ooh. I love that disc. It's a little less stable than other glow reactors. I just love the way it feels in my hand. And when I release it on Anheuser Angle, I can rip on it and I know it's gonna stay and at the end, like come out just nice. Nice late fade. Mm. But it's, how much, it's how much yummy. distance, though? How much distance? You know what? I don't even really know because I don't throw it for distance shots. Right. Like, I don't think of it when I'm like, okay, I got it. Well, if it's your only disc, how, how do you I think know, it would I work? Know. Right? You think, you, you got know, it. slower speed, you have to be able to throw a flex. Do you think you throw a flex shot to get your max distance out of it? Uh, maybe. <laughs> I'll go with that one because I, I think it's an interesting answer. I don't know. Because it's a very specific mold and right. plastic and run. So if you ever lose it, you can never play again. I almost lost it this last oh, week in league. No. I left it in the field. Not good. I know. Have your name and number on it? No. Mm, but always have your it. name and number on your discs. Or I know. you could like melt the edge of your disc, stick in a chip, oh. and track it. No, that's uh, illegal. It's illegal, that's right. Illegal. You can't, you can't play in tournaments. Do not take <laughs> do advice not. from Lou. This it is what I've learned. Joke. All right, fine. I'll go with the Glow Reactor. Glow Reactor. Final answer. Good choice for you. Final answer. Very good. I like it. What about you? So I'm actually tossed between a few discs tossed. too. Tossed up, whatever. Whatever the phrase is. I'm not good at phrases. Um, <laughs> you're you're coining them left and right. I'm, I'm tossed right I just, now. I just make my own You're torn? Words. Yeah, torn, tossed. It's a toss up between two discs. See, I'm mixing up different <laughs> That's phrases. That's a tongue twister. Yeah. All right, tell us. Red what are leather, they? yellow leather, those are the two discs. Um, either a stable potter, right? Because I feel like- Oh, a potter. Maybe. Right, that's one of my two options because a stable putter will allow me to th crank on something and still come back. I can throw it maybe 200 feet now, but if it was the only disc that I could use, I could eventually throw it further, right? Plus when you're start starting out, you're supposed to throw putters to kind of accentuate any mistakes or errors Absolutely. in your form, so it should help me 
be a better player overall and gain distance. But that's like an ideal world. The other thought I had was just to throw my favorite disc that I throw off the tee most often, and then I'll just figure out how to do a short game and putt with it. That would be a deeper three in G-Star Plastic. So, you know, there's two different trains of thought. It's like, you know, what am I going to be, you know, if this was a real scenario? Am I really just trying to get the best player I could with one one disc? Or just today, if I had to go out and do it, I would probably not just use a staple putter because I can only throw it 200 or 180 feet. All right, so you would feel with the, the courses around or the courses that you would see, you'd be limited in the immediate sense if you just chose putter now. So you would probably go T-Bird. G Star T Bird 3. Yep. To be a little more distance, hopefully get yourself closer to the basket where putting then becomes not an issue. Right. Because T Bird 3 putting is something completely different than yeah, that's gonna be. <laughs> the judge or what are you what are you putting with? AVR. AVR. AVR is completely uh, different yeah. putting with oh, than yeah. the G Star T Bird. Oh yeah. I'll be putting put like, be put like Matty O, a little Anheuser type thing. You're gonna have to get back. creative. Uh, uh, there's a I have to think about the out. whole game real quick, right? The reason I pick the mid-range is because they have better glide than a putter. If I need to go shorter than a putter, I'll just throttle down. Mm, but they're the, you know, if you train really hard to throw a putter far, you're talking about when you need to bite off that distance in the woods, you're going to have to throw what is considered your hardest shot, most powerful shot That's in true. a tighter sense. So the can you become the the person or the player that threads the needle with their putter through the woods for four hundred feet? Yes, but I guarantee you, you'll end up like Babe Ruth striking out more mm. than hitting home runs. So the the mid range right. allows you to get a little bit enough speed where you just you'll end up on the conservative end of the course, but you'll still find your opportunities to attack the course, and then you'll still be able to have a little bit of a putting chance if you're just a little outside that green. That's that's why I like that stable. That's why I wish you would go for the buzz and you didn't go for the buzz. Not it's not disappointment, but it's so close. Comment below what's close to disappointment. <laughs> no, don't oh, do that. No. Oh my no. god. But that's, that's what your one round disc would be. I think the mid is the perfect one disc round, whatever. The perfect disc. What about like something good. super neutral, like like a Mako three or something? Do you think you'd yeah. have more manipulation power with it? I think and could be more useful for, for me, debatably. For me. At my arm speed and the snap that I produce or the rotation that I put on the disc, I have found that that disc is the most versatile for me where I could throw it in a stable sense and I can manipulate it to make it over stable. Uh -huh. And I can also um, be a little more aggressive with the shot and create the understability from multiple angles. Highs or flips or just turnovers. Yeah. So the mid range is going to be the all-purpose disc for that. If I had to, for the rest of my life, just go out with one disc, that would probably have to be the stable mid-range. And if I had to pick the one out of my bag today to last me forever, it would be the, the compass. Now that makes sense for, you know, someone who plays in the pro division where you can throw that as far as you need to in most courses, right? I can't. I can't throw drivers as far as you can throw mid range, which is why I think <laughs> I'm kind of leaning towards that the driver because I need the distance I can't putt with a putter anyway. I might <laughs> as well, <laughs> might as well throw a disc that I might, can throw further. Might as well go with a Calvin Heinberg uh, Halo Destroyer on this one. Yeah. What do you think? Just outside of 15 feet? What do you think, Joanna? This I is the mean, smart play. Look, I mean, if you can park every hole, you don't need to putt. Run every true. It's so, easy to drop a disc into the basket, no matter how big it is. Just saying. Yeah. Um, so would would that advice go towards somebody looking to get into the game? So where would your answer lie if you were trying to push a recommendation of someone who wants putter. to play disc golf? You would go putter, putter first? Putter or mid-range if you're just doing one. Because like I said, that's every I've heard many times recommended play putter only rounds because it's going to accentuate your mistakes and it'll help you learn from them. Sure. So if you're new, that's just going to accelerate. Mm. And we've, we talked on a previous episode that you shouldn't start your career out throwing 14-speed discs. And that's, that's the answer, is you're supposed to throw putters and mid-ranges to start. So, I think that makes the most sense. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, yes, okay, play with putters, play with putters, sure. Have I ever done that? No. I think if you're going to have a newbie come out and try, bring a couple options, bring them to a field first before you bring them on the course, and just ask them what feels good in the hand. Sure. Because there's a lot of times when I go to throw a putter, and it feels 
super awkward. I don't mm. like throwing putters. They're too, the grip feels wrong to me. And like, maybe I just haven't found the right one to throw, like as a throwing putter. Mm. So, I mean, the search is always on for my big, you know, it's fine. Yeah. It's always adjusting, I'm trying new things. But for someone who's day one, ask them what feels good. And if yeah. they like it, if it comes out of their hand well, let them play right. and just see what happens. Because who cares if it's a three speed or a five speed necessarily? Does so, that matter? So definitely if they go with a fairway driver from Comfort, well, I it wouldn't could be okay. Offer it would, that. No, okay, okay. I don't think I would. As a one disc for a first round, I would give some... I don't well, think I'd I jump I think, into rock. I, I, I think I think there's like there's discs out there that are very much appropriate, like in a fairway sense for a, could be a new player. I guess the DX Leopard was like my first like DX Leopard drivery type of disc. Yeah, there's because they're easy. The Witness, the Jade. Yeah, there's, oh, yeah. there's 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 there are beginner, mm -hmm. not beginner necessarily friendly because they they suit a lot of multiple purposes in terms of whose game, but there are right. more beginner friendly uh, than others. Uh, there's equipment appropriate to who needs it like, yeah. category. Like and the so diamond. There's, there's lighter weight drivers that aren't your 14 speeds, that they're your your six and seven speeds mm -hmm. yeah. that are super beginner friendly. Um, or for someone who doesn't have an arm speed, you know, friendly. The those discs I think are okay. I, I think a mid range is okay, and if a putter's comfortable, that's okay. Yeah. I just kind of like try to. I, I keep gravitating towards what's in the middle of all that, yeah. and it. I just go back to the mid, and I think, echoing off of what like you said, the putter could feel like a little too deep in your hand, not so comfortable to give a full throw, and like it's going to come off your hand in time. Right. Could end up grip locked or hung up on, and that's my common mistake, even as a pro with a putter, is just holding on to it too darn long and not getting that release. Right. Yeah. So the mid-range will probably always remain my ultimate suggestion disc. Premium plastic, good flight characteristics. Doesn't could, change as you learn the game. Could be, a, stra the could be a Stratus, could be a Mako 3, could be... Um, uh, an Origin. An Origin. It could be, uh, what's that, a Bounty. There's tons of friendly flying mids out there. I like the variety today for those friendly flyers because the premium plastic aspect, like we talked about in previous episodes, that disc will remain that flight right. through their learning experience, and that, that'll yeah. keep them, you know, attracted to the game and excited. I think the the mid too because they don't. I, I would think the appeal of learning the game is seeing the distance and the speed. I think the putter will be limiting always right out the gate. Sure. I like the fireworks of disc golf. Make it go far, make it go in the basket, <laughs> yeah, you know? that's right. So certainly we have a few different kind of ideas, but yeah. you know, that was a fun little question about what would you do with one disc yep. round? Again, comment what you think yours was. Um, but kind of the other end of the spectrum, there's been a topic mm -hmm. going around of potentially limiting the number of discs that pros could have in their bag. Because I think this kind of comes from traditional golf. There's a certain number of clubs. I don't know the number, I don't play golf but there's only a certain number you can have, and translating that to disc golf, it's an interesting topic. So first, do you think <laughs> maybe this should be something? And if so, you know, where do you think that number you know, lies? Yeah, I think eventually there is gonna have to be a cap. I mean, could you imagine someone with like a three-tiered cart or two carts or a wheelbarrow of discs coming out? Like, if there's no limit, and someone could make an argument for like, I need this specific disc for this specific shot that could happen if I'm in this. I mean, people think about everything. And so I could see it happening. Will it happen soon? I don't know, but right. somebody somewhere, I mean, that's why there are rules, right? Like somebody right. somewhere is gonna do this and we're gonna look at it and say, okay, that's ridiculous. But do I have a, an answer on the number of discs right. people should have? I don't. I'll tell you that I carry, I think, 22 discs right now. And if, if I had to be honest, I think that's lighter than what it was last year. I think I'm working on some things in my bag or trying to simplify, and maybe I'm working in a, a new uh, disc for a specific mold or something. So yeah, I think I'm at 22 discs, and that's a lot. I know my bag pretty well too, so that my selection is pretty quick. I think if limiting the number of discs that you carry has any benefits, it would be that you 
have less options, right? So you think it's a, a it would time speed thing up. of it, maybe it one could, it could, it could speed things up when there's less to think about. For example, you're thirsty, you go into a store, right? You walk into your Wawa or Quick Check or something like that. Well, the choice is hard because from one end of the store to the other, there are drinks in coolers. And then outside of the coolers, there's fountain drinks and other drinks and drinks. And now you don't know how to just walk in, grab a drink and leave. That's true. So the benefit of having a limited bag, I think, could speed up some of the play. Now, to play devil's advocate real quick. Having less discs may impact players' ability to throw a good shot, thus increasing the time they amount of play. Ooh, I I don't think that would be the case. I think there's a lot of backups and stuff. I think I think if you were to start taking some discs out of my bag, maybe one round would be. Uh, but I think what I would realize is how to use my tools better. So maybe it'd be an initial thing would slow down, sure. but then eventually would pay off in the long run sure. for saving some time. For, for saving some time. But other than that, if they want to make the discs heavier or if people want to carry 500 of them, join the tournament I'm playing. I'd love to have you. Because <laughs> I want to see someone physically make it through with like 500 discs. Could you imagine a caddy though? Like, they need like stumbling three along. caddies. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I. But do you see people like shuffle? They have like, they come up to like such the basic shot, right? And they have three discs in their hand. And it's like, I know you're laying up for 80 feet. There's no way you're <laughs> running that. What is your layup disc? Yeah. How, how do you have how three, you have three in, your in your hand? You half set up and you went back to your bag and now you're, you're coming back with a fourth option for the layup. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's just too much sometimes. And uh, man, I'm pretty sure I would get stoned in the like community of disc golf by people for saying like, yeah, let's limit our bags and stuff like that. But... Maybe we do have like too many options. I mean, I'm not saying limited to ten or right. twenty, right. but like, there are some bags that hold like forty discs. Yeah, that's. I mean, look. I guess if the bags exist and people want to fill them up and sling it around, like, good for you. Like, yeah. do you really need all those discs in a round? Personally, I like to keep a smaller bag, and I'll switch. You know, um, switch discs out depending on what course I play. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not going to need all my drivers on a super wooded course. Right. Right. You just don't need it. And like, but you need to know what you need and what you don't sure. need. So do I have more than just the discs in my bag in my rotation? Yeah, but it depends on where you are. What do we think like would be an appropriate number? What would be like, it's arbitrary to just throw something out. It's completely made up, but. Well, how about, how about phrase it this way? If it were an extreme number, how do you think it would, cha- it would affect the game? Let's say the number was, 10 or 13. I think what golf is, is somewhere around 13. Correct me if I'm wrong. I probably am. But anyway. Let's go with our class of molds that we have. We have putter, mid range. Then we have fairway driver and distance driver traditionally, right? That's sure. the, we call that our so four class. Three of each. Three of each. That's 12. What if you had. Oh my God. Wow. Three right. of Sh- each. Shouldn't you only need oh. 12 by that? Standard. Standard, but then, you know, you said 22, some bags hold 40. What are all these other discs? Extreme versions of, you know, stable, neutral, and, and understable. Hmm. Is that just what it is? They're utility discs for getting out of the woods. Um, but maybe if you didn't have as many discs, you'd be better throwing the ones you do have, and you wouldn't need them. I think it's a it's a very interesting kind of thought I of how lo- you would I would love it. to see where the charts would lie with popular discs then. Mm. If you were limited to how you could build your bag, would the di- like would that change? Would you see a rise in like less popular or flippier discs because you need to have it in your bag now? I think yeah. so. I think yeah. Right? You probably would. Right? right? <laughs> yeah. Silence and then a resounding <laughs> yes. Right? I'm think just about thinking about it. it. Like the like, whole the whole the whole shift of what would happen, the economics behind it too, would manufacturer suffer. Because if you don't I don't know. I mean I think popular molds are popular molds for a reason. Okay. So they're obviously useful. And I don't think something like a buzz. I mean, we just mentioned it earlier, but like, I don't think people have a buzz and it just sits in their bag and they never throw it. Like, that's a waste of space. It's, you know, 
Most people have multiple buzzes. Yeah, I mean, like, if you have it, you're probably using it. So that's where you get the popularity, I think. Now, will you need more interesting discs? Like, I, I throw a weird bag. I was, <laughs> I was thinking about this the other day. My friend looked at my back and said, what is this? Like, <laughs> when did you, like, find all these things? Like, I throw the rat, and I love the rat, but it's kind of weird. But I have a rat and a pig. Like, over, like super overstable, and then the, the rat's, like, kind of overstable, but I love it for approaches. Now, that can't leave my bag, but does that fit in in the putter realm? Mm -hmm. No. No. But it's not a mid-range. Like, so I know we're like three, three, and three, and three, right? you right? may need to shift the counter So like, how do I... Like, putting putter, rowing like, putter, mid-range, that's, you know... Right, you like, could where think does about that fit in? But definitely. you may have to find more interesting molds to like, bridge the gap between things to cover more shots. So like you were saying, like, you may have to look a little further than what you get. Right. Wow. And how about this? I'm sure we've all played Disc Golf Valley. You have a certain number of slots for putters and mid-ranges, right? So the way we're first talking is, well, <laughs> I don't need a stable driver. I'm going to get an extra putter. What if you had to? You had to have three putters, three mid-ranges, and you couldn't swap back and forth in real life. I think that would you know, make it even I think I could stricter do it. and harder to get a, a good bag for you know what your game is, right? I got this. You could do it? Maybe we should do a video of that. A disc golf valley, disc golf round, where you only come out with like a limited bag? Because I kind I of think of my bag round. like that anyway. Well, in tradition of disc golf valley. Yes. Gotcha. All right, we'll, we'll go out with 12 discs. 12. And and see, uh, you know how we how we can perform compared to what we normally. I mean, we'll do a control round, then we'll do the round of just twelve discs. That'd be interesting. Okay. I really think, I, personally, I'm not like trying to do my own horn or anything, but I, I really do think I could do this because I do try and have a disc that's like understable, neutral, overstable in each slot. Mm -hmm. And so when you break it down like that, the nuts and bolts of it, what else would you really need? Right. So. Uh, yeah, I'm just thinking through my bag right now. It's like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll take some other stuff out and just get more use out of, I don't know, a certain disc that I maybe wouldn't throw all the time. But if it's a toss up between the two, let's take one out of there and it's always this one. See how limited a bag you can make yeah. and still feel comfortable to play anywhere and have your distance and have your upshot and have your putting game and everything still. I'm curious to how many discs I would take out of my bag and, yeah, but what's the first disc you take out of your bag currently? Because oh, I know what mine is. Mine would be the most overstable driver that I have. Yep, that was not going to be mine. And then I would take out the least stable of my molds because I will angle adjust or speed adjust or mold adjust. So I, I know I could shed probably five or six discs alone off of circumstance, how I use them. Like I'll have, I have mid, a mid-range I won't use in the woods, so then that's gone. Mm -hmm. No longer useful. So some of those backups just are gone. <laughs> yeah, mm -hmm. I would definitely take a Firebird, my Firebird out of my bag first, because that's literally just, I use a utility disc, because I don't have the arm speed to actually throw it as a drive, unless I throw it on a roller angle, and then it kind of pans out, but. <laughs> How many people do you think are saying like, the first disc in my bag is a Firebird right now? Probably quite a, a fair few. Bit. It's a popular one. A fair one. bit. It's definitely a popular what is, disc. What is your popular... Okay, so like for your arm speed, what is your go-to? My go-to... Fairway driver. Fairway driver is the T-Bird 3. Is the T-Bird 3. Okay. Now, I actually have two of them. One's more being than the other. So I have like a one I can flip up the flat and one that I can kind of crank on and it'll come back. How many discs do you think you need to go out with in a round? I think I need... Eight. Minimum. Eight. Minimum eight. I can't do less than eight. I think I could do three and my score wouldn't be much different. <laughs> what are you doing out there? You could go out there with one of those fanny packs. Yeah. What I, are you even doing? I've, I've done plenty of rounds where I just carry my discs. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I've tried to do some like solo rounds or those putter rounds and stuff like that before. But I've never tried to just narrow my bag down so tightly to the point where... Dude, this is just your game in a little bag. What are you, you know, what are you doing here? Why do you? I, th I think that might be a good, a good training yeah. tool, right? Oh yeah, I think really fine tune your game. Yeah, you're. 
ability to shot shape, that's it. That's like what this is an exercise in. Like limit the tools and get your creativity on yeah. because your disc is not gonna be able to do everything for you. You gotta bring something also. I mean, get that body work and get that ankle yeah. up, get the nose up, get the nose down. Like how can you manipulate the flight of the disc by changing the, the thrill? Right, that might, by, go. by far my favorite part of the game is gonna be what you're talking about. Yeah, It's disc pe physics. Pe pe yeah, people Ooh. love watching the flight. People love... Um, or just physics. <laughs> people love hearing the chains. I love the artistry of shaping the shot. Mm. Yeah. That's the, Everybody out there is doing things their way. It's their, The course is your canvas, right? And uh, you just go paint that picture however you like. Mm. Yeah. So we're saying that we could play with so few discs. Begs the question, why do pros have so many discs, right? Are, are they just carrying them because they can in case they need them? Or is there some kind of disconnect between even like you're a local pro versus a touring pro that they do have that extra gear because they have so many more discs? I watch players all the time. Joanna watches more coverage than you do when you edit. Yeah. <laughs> and That's right. she'll, she'll attest to this that <laughs> she, she sees just players Throwing consistently. Calvin's gonna throw his orange what? Stop. Come Everybody on. knows. Alright, so like these discs, we see them, they use their <laughs> go to's left and right. Uh, like players probably are only using a good handful of discs anyway, but there are the edges of the course they don't wanna be on. Yeah. And they have their backup discs for those shots, for the risky ones, um, for ones. You know, there's backup discs to discs that they like to throw so they could get cycled in and find a certain level of wear and tear. And I have 22 discs in my bag, and I'm sitting here saying I only really need eight. <laughs> so, yeah, there's because there's no cap or limit, my imagination, it's just there's a reason why. I feel good with this disc. This disc is my trusty one. Right. <laughs> this is my lucky one yeah. and my trusty one, my go-to. And that's what ends up happening. You you spend, I've spent $90 on a disc and I put it in my bag to use. Everybody thought I was mad. Did you lose it? No, I oh, used good. it. I, I used it. Well, and and, and, and the, 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 thing, the thing was, is like, <laughs> it, ended up, yeah. it ended up in the bag only because it was like a cool looking disc. But it flew like the other three that I had in there. <laughs> so why would I carry it around? Just like pull it out. Just like, has anybody seen me pulling this shine? Yeah. <laughs> you nope. know, it's so important to throw what you love. Honestly, like throw what you think is pretty. Throw what you like to see flying in the air. Like I had a disc that I think it was Champ Plastic and it was like rainbow. And I love the way that thing flew. When the sun hit it, I'm like, oh, we're like at the club. But like, I'm on the disc golf <laughs> yeah, course. Like, the I've disco got my disco ball, ball, like disco ball there. Effect. Like, it's just, that visual made me so excited. I'm like, I love this disc. I can't wait to throw this disc. So, Real quick, I'd like to make a correction. Um, somebody corrected us that the disco was not popular in the 80s. It was the 70s. Who said 80s? I said 80s, because that's when you were born. Remember, I was making the joke. Well, oh, well oh, I knew I that. I'm, okay. Well, I would just like to apologize. I was born in 80. He was born in 2000. <laughs> 2000, 1992. 2019. 2092. So I, I would just like to apologize. <laughs> 70s. Thank you for the correction. Go on. Oh, I don't know what I'm saying anymore. Oh, throw what you love. I mean, yes. throw what feels good in the hand. Throw, have multiple of them. I think you also have to look... You said, why do pros have so many? Like, what's on the course? Is there a lot of water? Are you going to lose discs? Are you going to go for a shot and definitely lose a disc? Well, not, nobody wants to definitely lose mm. a disc, but is the chance high? Are you going to go for it again? Could you turn it over and throw it in the water? Like, we've seen this happen in tournaments, like, time and time yeah. again on big water carries. Like, it's not uncommon. And so what are you going to do? You have one of this disc in your bag or some a similar flight? You have one of that? No, you need a backup. If you know this is your play on that hole, you say, okay, I'm going to have two, maybe three in my bag, something similar to make sure that if I do lose it, I can get through the round and still have this disc facility on me and, ab and available to me. Like, you can't just lose a whole disc slot. Right. Yeah, so, I mean, that's, it. like, super important. That's happened to me at, like, Stafford. I mean, <laughs> the pond is, like, this big. But the it's, angle at which you yeah. play it, especially from the lungs, like... It's possible. Oh, like wind comes in off that 
um, off that field on the other side and like... That it, pond is a pit. You're not getting I, No, discount. I mean, you just know, okay, there is a chance. Like, how is my bag today? Do I have what I need if I, you know, salute this goodbye and hopefully see it again after they rake it? <laughs> like, yes or no? And yeah, I think you really have to think about your that. Discs. Yeah, always. But that's... I say always, and I like never do. Because <laughs> I get a disc, I get excited about it. I'm like, yeah, it's in the bag. And yeah, then uh, it's fun. Know. It's fun to cycle a new plastic, see if it holds up right. to the, you know, to the other discs in your bag. And they, they're like comfort discs, right? They they come out to make yeah. you feel good and um, fresh, I guess. <laughs> you know, you gotta try something new every once in a while. And yeah, switch it up. Yeah, and throwing them in there is not a bad idea. And they're only in there because. Nobody's saying I can't have them in there. Right, there's no limit. There's no limit. There is no limit. <laughs> and if I really had to be honest with myself... The limit does not exist. <laughs> the limit, there is no, there is no limit. So, yeah, eight. You say three. <laughs> That's the answer. And you say... I don't know. How I many guess, discs should pros be limited to? The answer oh, is no, eight. No, for no, for me, I could limit myself to eight. <laughs> I could live with that's a clickbait title. That's <laughs> right. Yeah. And um oh, no, I pros only need one disc. Yeah. Why do they even make other discs? Yeah, why do they use discs? I don't Low know. key though, it'd be kind of cool to see all the pros play around with one disc. Who do you think would win? One disc, who would win? I'm going with Ricky. Really? Pig all day? I'm going I'm Ricky. Going no, I'm anymore. not. I'm Hard. not at all. I'm going with Ricky and he's probably gonna go felon round. And he's putting with a felon? You think I can't put with a he, deeper? He's three? not he's not putting at all. He's gonna go down there for tap ins and that's what he's gonna count on. I say James Conrad. Yeah. I he think he's an putters incredible all putter place. thrower and will throw them in situations that I'm shocked by. He's also an incredible putter. Uh, yeah, I, like I think wherever he lands, like he's always scary. Yeah, yeah. scaring chains wherever he goes. Um, so, re, uh, funny enough, I just remembered that we just filmed a one disc tournament once around the mountain on Heiser Media's channel. I actually we talked about this topic. I completely forgot that we just did that. So go check that <laughs> out. That's, that's great. Um, uh, on Heiser Media's channel, subscribe over there if you haven't subscribed here yet. Subscribe to our channel. We also have yeah. um, all of our episodes available just for audio listeners. Audio listeners, if you're listening, um, thank you for listening and leave us a review. I don't know why I gave my thumbs up because you can't see me. Um, <laughs> oh, but... I'm sorry that you can't see our antics. <laughs> us just like looking at thank each other. Thank you all very much for watching or listening. Um, that was episode 11, and we will see you on the next hole.